So do you remember that professor I've been telling you about the last few sessions? Last class I really noticed him give me a dirty look and it seems like he thinks that I don't care about his class or that I'm not really trying. But that's just not true. Sometimes I just find my mind wandering. I want to focus, I really do. It just gets so boring sometimes. Hmm. Yeah, I remember you telling me last week how excited you were about the class, but it sounds like it's been really hard for you to pay attention. It's a long class, five hours. Yeah, exactly. It's almost impossible, I would say. I don't know what's wrong with me. I really hope I'm not giving him the wrong impression. Hmm. Have you experienced difficulties with attention or concentration in the past? Um, not really. I mean, sometimes a little bit, I guess. I don't know. I guess I never really noticed it before. It's just not something that I focused on that much in the past. I mean, what exactly is attention anyway? If I want to focus, I should just be able to do it, right? It's not something that should be so difficult. Well, attention's actually a pretty big deal. It's critical to most forms of thinking and behavior. It plays a role in almost everything that we do, from learning algebra to having a conversation with a friend. However, as you've probably noticed, maintaining attention on something that's boring can be pretty hard. Yeah, tell me about it. Okay, so what exactly is attention then? Well, there are two types of sustained attention, perceptual and reflective. These are also sometimes called external and internal sustained attention, respectively. Western cognitive scientists tell us that external sustained attention involves executive functioning. So that's things like discriminating objects from one another, controlling impulses, prioritizing, and selecting a response. This type of sustained attention enhances the brain's processing of an object while at the same time inhibiting distractors. Imagine you're parking your car in a really big parking garage on your way to see a movie. Because you're using executive functioning, before leaving your car, you look around at the signposts and notice that you're parked next to a sign that reads 5G. Using sustained external attention, you say to yourself, okay, I'm on the fifth floor, row G, got it. So when the movie's over, you search for section 5G as you make your way to your car. Internal sustained attention, on the other hand, involves encoding perceptual information, for example, learning, memorizing the physical features of the object first, and then reproducing and manipulating them in your mind for a specific goal. So let's imagine you're in the same parking lot, and before leaving your car, this time you're gonna look around and you're gonna focus on the features of the parking garage. So you memorize the shape of the lot, the orientation of the pillars, and maybe even some of the signs and markings along the wall. So you're utilizing your internalized sustained attention, and you can now see this parking garage in your mind's eye. So using this strategy, once you leave the theater, even if you exit through a different door, you can manipulate the parking garage in your mind and quickly find your way to your parked car. This is generally a lot more difficult and it can take a lot of practice. But, like most things, with lots of practice, you can get really good at it. Eventually, you can develop a very specific and accurate mental representation and can then divest and distribute your attention to other information at the same time like responding to that text as you make your way back to your car. So when I'm in class, that would be more like external sustained attention, right? Because I'm focusing on something external, like the slides or the whiteboard, and also trying really hard to stop myself when I'm really distracted, and controlling my impulses too, like ignoring my phone after getting a text message. Exactly. But sustained attention seems so abstract. If I practice it, how would I know if I'm getting any better at it? How would you even begin to measure something like that? External sustained attention has primarily been studied in the context of performance tasks in a laboratory. Generally, they call it vigilance. It basically means readiness to respond to rare and unpredictable targets amidst frequent non-targets, or distractors, for prolonged periods of time. In order to study this, experimenters often ask participants to focus their attention onto a computer screen in order to search for and identify a target among non-targets. In other words, the participant looks at the screen and presses a keyboard at the site of a specific symbol, but not for another. For external sustained attention tasks like these, it's been found that on average, a person can stay vigilant on a task for about 30 minutes. 
After 30 minutes, their performance starts to get noticeably worse. They get distracted, they might get tired, and they start to miss things. Yeah, like me about 30 minutes into class. Yeah, that sounds about right. Exactly. So let's remember, it's important to keep in mind that these experiments are laboratory-based and may not accurately reflect what external sustained attention looks like in the real world. A real-world example may be helpful. So take, for example, the TSA workers at the airport, the screeners that are at the security checkpoints, and they're using their external sustained attention to do their jobs well. They must be vigilant, and most of the time, their attention is focused on the harmless purses, the briefcases that are coming through. We'll call those the non-targets. But even though they see mostly harmless non-targets, they must remain vigilant and focused enough to identify the sketchy bag when it comes through, their target. Oh yeah, now that makes sense. Other research has shown that external sustained attention is not just a state of readiness to detect a target, but more about the ability to inhibit a response to a target after a long period of responding to predictable non-targets. In other words, it's the ability to stop yourself from doing what you were doing once you see your target. Okay, let me give you a real life example. Think of a train engineer who stops her ongoing train when she hears a danger alarm. No matter how smooth or how boring the ride, she has to remain vigilant to signs of danger and be ready to hit the brakes at any time. Oh, okay, I see. So like when I'm driving on my way to school, even if I've gone that route hundreds of times before, I still have to be aware in case there's a detour or a crazy driver or something like that. Exactly. So when I'm having such a hard time paying attention, what's going on? What do you think is wrong with me? Well, let's start by thinking about what's going right when you are paying attention. Scientists have been able to look at more than just computer experiments in a lab. For example, human and animal neuroimaging studies have been helpful in identifying some of the brain structures involved in external sustained attention. These studies suggest that external sustained attention involves activation of the right medial frontal and dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. These form the anterior attention system, which projects to the intraparietal sulcus of the posterior attention system, which in turn modulates the sensory and secondary sensory areas and coordinates with the subcortical system mediated by the pulvinar and superior colliculus to steer attention to the right location. Simultaneously, projections from the visual cortex to the temporal parietal junction facilitate bottom-up attention with help from the visual frontal cortex. These processes are mediated by cholinergic projections from the basal forebrain to the cortical areas and in turn noradrenergic projections from the locus coryleus terminate in the thalamus and the basal forebrain. Many of the same neural regions involved in external attention seem to be also involved in internal attention, but during internal sustained attention, they function a bit differently. Um, hello? Sorry, can you, can you please repeat that? I kind of missed some of it. Uh, no, so moving on. Unfortunately, research on internal sustained attention is very new, so we still have a lot to learn. Western cognitive science primarily focuses on sustained attention from a perceptual perspective. This is partly because it's much harder to measure such a complicated process as internal sustained attention. Unlike external attention, Internal attention requires you to not only focus on an object, but to produce an accurate mental representation of the object, hold it in your mind, manipulate it in your head, and then complete the task. This is not easy to do, never mind measure. Wow, yeah, that sounds like a lot of steps. It sounds like it can get pretty tiring. Oh, it can be, especially if you're not used to it. And especially, if you're texting in session with me. <laughs> Most of the best studies on internal sustained attention so far have focused on Tibetan Buddhist practitioners. These studies suggest the practice really does make perfect, or at least better. Expert Buddhist practitioners who practice internal sustained attention are able to increase their acuity and perceptual discrimination 
and improve vigilance even on the most difficult tasks or very boring ones. However, since internal sustained attention is very different from external sustained attention, using perceptual measures do not tell us the full story about internal sustained attention. We still have a lot to learn. Well, that's actually pretty encouraging. It's good to hear that it's not that I'm lazy or disinterested or rude. I'm just a beginner with all this sustained attention stuff. Any advice on how I can strengthen my sustained attention muscles, Doc? Actually, I do. First, turn off your phone completely. And let's start with this.